Hi and welcome to NoBB, where we build apps without using any black box components and study all the parts that make them work. Today we're going to use the camera and build a web app that learns to recognize different objects. We'll first have to teach it things like this is a fish, this is a giraffe, this is a camera, and this is a tree. But then it's going to be able to use what it has learned and recognize new objects all by itself. We build the app in five parts and I'm going to keep them here throughout the video. But now let's get some technical things out of the way and build the interface. This is going to be the structure of our page, quite basic HTML. We need a canvas to show images from the camera and I'm going to set its size here using JavaScript. I use global variables because we'll need to access them later. Then a div where the app will write what it sees later on. For now, I just use this question mark as a placeholder. And to teach it things, we'll just type text in this input field and press this button right here. With the interface out of the way, we can move on to the next step, which is how it sees. And that just means we need to access the camera. We try to start the camera here. This is when the browser asks if we allow it or not. Once we do, we get the data stream from the camera, we link it to a video element and start playing. This won't show images anywhere though. For that, we use this function here that draws them to the canvas every 42 milliseconds. If we denied access earlier or we don't have a camera, then this message pops up. Now, this code works, but my camera has a wide aspect ratio and different browsers tend to handle it in different ways. Now, I do look thinner on the left, but I generally am not a big fan of squished images. So to have this work similarly on different browsers, I will crop it myself to the size of the canvas. That should do it. Now, we get images. But what exactly are images and how to work with them? I'll tell you, but first let's talk about buildings. This is a building and this is the building at night when only some people are home. Now, depending on who has their lights on, we might get this. And if some people dim their light a little, yeah, it should be easy to say that this is my Color is very important too. We get different colors by mixing red, green and blue light in different amounts. Now this is a color image of 20 by 20 pixels. But in our app, I don't want to use color because usually we recognize things just fine. And a gray image is far easier to work with. It's just a 20 by 20 matrix of numbers and the values are between 0 and 255 and represent different amount of lights or different shades of gray. If we change the values, we get an entirely different image, and if we use a larger matrix, the quality goes up. We said before that our canvas is a square with length of 300 pixels, and that's exactly how large our matrix has to be. Now, in the next step, Let's write a function that reads this matrix of pixel values from our canvas. Image data from the canvas comes in fact as a long array of numbers. The numbers come in groups of four, and each group represents a single pixel. The first three values are the red, green, and blue components we talked about earlier, but the fourth, it's actually transparency. We won't use that today, but some applications can have videos with transparent parts. What we do is we take the red, green, and blue values and average them. It's just one way to get a gray value and then put it into our matrix. Now, I like to debug as I write code and so should you to avoid mistakes. So I built this optional function which does some sort of inverse operation. 
it puts the matrix onto the canvas. Study it if you want, but I won't go into it today because from now on we really work with just the matrix itself. But if I leave it on, you can see that the colors are now gone. So our app can now see. But when you and I look at an image like this, we somehow know what to focus on. These parts here are not important, but what's important is the guy giving the thumbs up. So that's what the next step is going to be. We're going to have the app understand what it sees. I will write a function that isolates the object in the image. And should be easy enough, I mean, if you remember our test setup, it was quite easy. The background is white. So I'm going to make all other pixels completely black. And in that way, I'm going to mark where the object is inside the image. What the function is doing is not what we expect now, is it? The problem is the background is not entirely white and we'll need to use a threshold here instead. This value works for me, but you may need to experiment a little. Hmm, you know what this reminds me of? Who's that Pokemon? Yeah, okay, so the app knows where the object is now, but what makes this a fish? I mean, what makes this shape different than, say, a tree or a giraffe? I can tell this is a giraffe. It has a long neck and four legs. I only see three legs. But I know that one leg is behind the other, and, and I know what legs are and what a neck is. And These things are very complicated to program and very easy to screw up. We need to think much simpler. Look at this. Can you still tell which is which? I can, kind of. These boxes look quite different. So next, I'm going to write a function that gets the bounding box of the object. OK, nice, simple enough. I just go through all elements and find these four values here, using another optional function here to draw the box on top of the object. The aspect ratios of these boxes look quite different, so that's what we'll calculate next. Okay, so I use these differences and calculate the width and length so that the width is always smaller than the length. In this way, the aspect ratio stays the same even if the object's flipped. I store this value in a global variable here because I want to use it later in another function. And I also print it in the output we defined way back in the beginning of the lecture. Now our app can finally tell us something. It understands the property of the object. I'm going to put this understanding part on hold for a while and focus on the learning part. This function starts when we press the learn button in the interface or enter on the keyboard. It makes a connection between the aspect ratio calculated earlier and whatever is in the text box, which should be filled or we get a warning. We also empty the text field here, so we don't need to do it manually later. Now, when we show it something, we type its name, and that's it. It learned that the fish has this aspect ratio. Same goes for the giraffe and for the tree. So, we're done with learning. That's it. Moving on to the next step. I'm going to plot these properties as points on an axis to give you a better feel of what's going on. And when we show it now this other fish, it looks like the new point is quite close to the other fish it already learned. So one way to recognize objects is to say that they are the same as the nearest thing on this axis. And that's what we're going to do next. Done. 
Instead of printing the object properties here, we now call a function to recognize the current object and print the name. If it hasn't learned anything yet, it will continue to show the question mark, otherwise it looks for the nearest neighbor and prints its name. To search for the nearest neighbor, I just calculate the distance to all past observations and keep the one with the minimum distance. And the distance function is just the absolute difference between the two values. That's it. We have a fully working app. But let's see how it really works. Yeah, yeah, I know it recognizes the fish already. Seems to work for the giraffe. Ah, but it fails for the camera. And now for the tree. A 50% success rate with such a simple set is not very impressive. The aspect ratio is just not enough. We need now to go back to the understanding step and think what else we can add. What other property we can calculate here? If we look inside these boxes, the giraffe has all this empty space around it, but the camera box is pretty full. Yeah, I think we can easily tell them apart by counting this fullness value. So that's what we're gonna do next. To measure the fullness, we first count the number of black pixels using this simple function and just divide that to the area of the bounding box. I changed this to be an array and store in it both the aspect ratio and the fullness. But that means that now we work in two dimensions. And it also means that the distance function needs work. We need to use the Euclidean distance instead. Now, the way I wrote the distance function here, using a loop, it generalizes to any number of dimensions. So if you can think of new properties, just add them there and mention how many dimensions you want to use in this global variable. I think we're ready to test with more objects. Let's start over and teach it new things. This is a perch. This is a salmon. This is a giraffe. This is an elephant. This is a spruce. This is an oak. This is a pencil. This is a camera. Now, let's see if it can recognize the things. Yes. 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 Ah, this is not a fish. What we can do now is tell it this is a spruce and just go on. Yes, yes, no, nah. another mistake. This camera is quite different from the first one we showed. Okay, it will learn this too. This is a camera. Let's try another set. Ah, tough start. This is a perch. It can't be helped though. Our current features, well, this just looks pretty much like a spruce. Yes, 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 no. Now, yeah, the nearest neighbor here is a fish, but if we look at the next nearest neighbors, they are both spruce. A more advanced method can use more neighbors and decide based on the majority. We won't do that now, but just so you know. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, one more set. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so the method learns when seeing more objects. Seems to work great, but one problem I have with it is if we rotate like this, then the properties change. What would be nice is if the bounding box would also rotate with it. 
I'll leave this as a homework for you guys. Now, let's try other things. How about if I draw something? Neat. <laughs> it works. Okay. Next, let's analyze the behavior a little more. How about we bring back our friend Mario? It seems to actually tell them apart because Luigi's clothes become one with the background. How about letters? A, B, C. There's a problem here. D and B look the same and they will look like P and Q later on. What kind of features would you use for this task? What if we are the subject? In this case, it looks like it doesn't separate me from the background. But if I'm dressed in black, it's going to work. And I can do all kind of gestures like and it will distinguish them just fine. I can even teach hand gestures but first I'm gonna have to invert the image and then yeah seems to work even if I move my hand quite much. All right that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Check the video description for links to the source code and a more sophisticated version of this app with more functions and even a few secret features. The first one to find the secret features and answer to all these questions here will get a shout out in the next video. Radu, signing out.